and welcome. I'd like to recommend uh, three channels today. Uh, the first one being, uh, and I stress not in order of preference, um, the first channel is um, a German woodturner and uh, woodworker, Pete TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. Um, the things that Peter does are quite unique. They're um, obviously very characteristic of him um, and he has an awful lot of talent to share and he does that willingly. Um, as do all the turners who um, spare the time to upload their experiences on YouTube. So a big shout out for Peter and um, I'd like to um, say that I am very uh, pleased that I'm able to share in his journey um, in the woodturning world. Secondly, uh, Robbie the woodturner. Um, Robbie is an Irish turner of immense talent and immense experience. He does phenomenal work, uh, whether it be simple objects or very delicate, difficult objects. He explains his steps that he uses and he has a really pleasing um, manner about him. Uh, he's very enjoyable to watch. So again, Robbie the Woodturner, pop over to his channel um, and enjoy and learn from his videos. And thirdly and finally, and by no means least, um, I was recommended to this channel by Robbie, um, a guy called Kevin Krull. This guy is brilliant. He's got an amazing ability to um, portray his work and explain what he's doing uh, in a very easy um, and enjoyable manner. Kevin hasn't been on YouTube for that long, but he's obviously been wood turning for quite a while because uh, he certainly knows what he's doing. So. Give Kevin a, a visit as well and subscribe to all these channels, these three channels, and uh, look through their video collection and you will not be the worse off for doing so, I assure you. As usual, I'll put the links down uh, below in the description so that you can go straight to their channels when you so wish. Today's uh, video is going to be uh, another in the series of the Beginner's Guide. So I've decided after quite a few questions and comments um, on, in, in private messages etc. Um, about the tools that we use. Um, again, never will it be a definitive guide, guide especially from me. But um, I will go through the processes that um, I employ to try and get the tools to do what I want them to do, uh, not to do what they want to do. Okay, so I've seen a white paper underneath this practice piece here so that it's easier to see what I'm trying to get at with regards to the different um, angles of the spindle gouge. Um, this is a 3 8 spindle gouge and um, this is Robert Sorby. It's one I picked up on eBay uh, not long after I started turning two and a half, three years ago. There's not much left of the flute and the angle of the bevel, and by the angle of the bevel I mean from the tip to the heel, on this is 35 degrees. They are measured in different ways by different manufacturers. This is the flute. Uh, some manufacturers measure the, the size rather of their gauge is stated as the distance between the um, two edges of the flute and others the diameter of the bar that is used to make it. It's not a great deal of difference with regarding to the use of the, of the, um, of the tool so I wouldn't get too hung up about it. Um, types, uh, this is the um, Henry Taylor um, which I do prefer because it's got a bit more weight to it. Now they actually advertise this as a 3-8 spindle gouge but as you can see there's very, if apart from the length of, of the flute, there's very little difference. But you might notice, and this is not down to my grinding because I have exactly the same position on my, um, on my jig arm for both gouges, that the fingernail on the Henry Taylor is slightly smaller than on the Robert Sorby. Is that the flute is narrower on the Henry Taylor. However, that's only a small point to make. I honestly and truly can't stress enough that practice is so important. 
Don't forget you're not a professional turner and at the end of the day you're not in the shop every day for six, seven, eight, nine hours a day using the tools time day in day out your muscle memory gets honed you get very comfortable you know exactly what tool you're going to be using for each particular job when you're a weekend turner like me or a, a part-time hobbyist turner like myself and the majority of turners out there you can't expect to be 100 percent au fait with everything you do because you don't do the same job often enough to become proficient at it so don't despair if you find that one day you go into the shop and you can't get your your tools to get to do what you want them to do it's natural you might have been away from the shop for two weeks three weeks a month i was amazed when i had no power and i came back in here after about a month and i started working I really had to not start from the beginning, it's like learning to ride a bike, I mean I knew the basics but I wasn't employing them and that's because I hadn't been practicing. Even down to the stance I'd felt awkward, it didn't take long to get back into it but the point I'm trying to make is that practice is everything, even if it's only half an hour, get out there, get the tools in your hand, get your stance right, get comfortable and the more often you do it the easier it will become and the more natural it will become. Of course the other thing is why do you get a catch with the spindle gouge? Well providing you rub the bevel and present the tool correctly you shouldn't. Remembering this is the bevel and we're cutting with either that portion just off centre and just off centre the other side depending which way we're moving the gouge. Now if I want to take that wood off here, just, just to, this is all part of the practicing process that I do. If I get a catch, which I invariably do, what have I done wrong? You can also do it this way. If you present the bevel to the work, okay, and by hand rotate, you can see I'm getting a nice shaving, I'm rubbing the bevel, I've turned it over to about, I don't know, 35, 40 degrees. You see, you, if you do this, you're going to get that. You're, go, you're going to get a catch. That's why you don't go straight in. You rub that bevel. You don't bring it down this way. Because look, we're rubbing the bevel, rub the bevel, and it's going to go. Bearing in mind that this is going to be turning a lot quicker than this. So, honestly and truly do this quite regularly if I find I'm not presenting the tool properly then I get a catch for whatever reason I'll do it with the scooters I'll do it with any tool I've got I'll see what I need to do to obtain what I term the proper shaving from that tool okay it doesn't show it very well there I'm getting a good shaving so that's the aspect that the tool must go now if I'm not doing that I'm going to get a catch or I'm not going to get the tool to react the way I want to. Now the same thing, we're turning, now bearing in mind this is a spindle, a very small spindle turning, I'm turning about 2,300 revs. Now I've got my tool rest further away than I should, so turn the lathe off and move it slow, slightly more towards the work. When I'm doing, you see, don't forget, I've got a fairly big sweat back there. Now if I'm working on here, if I turn over too much I'm going to be actually resting on the wing. I have to be a little bit further back than this when I'm working on my finials. And also because when I'm working on a finial my hand is over here to support the work as I'm working down into the supported wood <coughs> I need that bit of room. So if I present, let's just say, why am I going to get this? This is quite a, uh, a common occurrence. I want to go down into here, okay? I want to make that sweep. So I want to start on the edge. Now look how I'm actually presenting the tool. Hopefully it'll bring it up. Skidding across. Why am I skidding across? I'm not skidding across now, am I? Start, start the cut. Very lightly. Lift the handle. Rotate your tool. And keep that... 
keep that keep that aspect all the time with a bevel rubbing the wood. So I start off on the end. Let's just square that off a little bit. Okay. Now I want. Let's pretend that's the bottom of a goblet. Well, I've got a ridge there. Let's turn it off. I've got. You can hardly see it actually, but I have got a ridge there, which you can see when it's spinning. Okay. So I want to start on this part here, and I want to go down to that. Um, bead. Now if I go in this way, which is one way you can go in, if you go in at 90 degrees using your thumb as support, you can start and slightly move, rub that level. I don't like that method, I use this method. You go in very lightly, right, just rub the bevel Start taking your shaving and move. Now look what happened. What happened there? Now I'll stop and I'll think, why did I? Why did that happen? Why did that scoot across there? I'd started the cut properly, and it's scooted back. Why? I didn't maintain bevel contact. So you have to keep your bevel in contact. Otherwise, you've got unsupported edge, which is very difficult to control. So. Again, start, bit of pressure, now we start to move and we've got the bevel contact and we can do it. Use the wing. Use the wing. But you'll notice that you won't get such a good finish if you do it the way I did it there. So start. Rub the bevel, rub the bevel, rub the bevel, and down. Start. Rub. Didn't rub the bevel. Start. Now we got the bevel, and you can go down. Okay, again this is only a practice piece, it's not going to turn out to be anything, but you can see the point I'm making. Don't be afraid to make your mistakes while you're practicing because that's how you learn. And then, um, hopefully, when you're doing a piece that's important to you, you won't make those important. mistakes. Which I said before, I think, when you're using any type of tool, make sure it's as sharp as you can possibly get it. Because a blunt tool, as I've said before, is not only a dangerous tool, it's not going to do anything that you want it to do with ease. Well, the finial broke. But it doesn't matter, because it's a practice piece. But what I must probably do with that is I'll sand that bit down there, and uh, I'll most probably use it on a piece at some future date. So all is not lost. Thanks very much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Cheers now.